Hey, it's Richard Reed with Direct Link Realty. I'm here to present the Ultimate Home Buyers Blueprint. This is a guide for home buyers themselves to help them understand the process that we need to walk through in order to get them from the idea of purchasing a house all the way through purchasing a house. And it serves as a guide to help them understand um, ahead of time what the steps in the process are, to give them a reference point to come back to as they get into the process because they're not going to remember everything, as well as a guide to ask questions of their agent or their lender or the closing attorney, etc. as we go through the process of the home purchase. So the idea is to try to have an, a reference point where people can read kind of an overview ahead of time of what's going to happen in the entire process and then in more detail read kind of section by section what phase they're in and maybe one or two phases ahead so they know what's coming next and they're prepared to walk through uh, the entire process. People understand that they're not missing things along the way and to give them a solid reference point to come back to you if they feel like there's something that's being missed or if there's something that they're not confident about, they've got kind of a tangible um, document to come back to. So let's start by just looking at the entire process. So obviously it starts with the idea of wanting to purchase a home or to move out of a rental property into something that you're going to own yourself. And that can take many forms. It could be a condo, it could be a townhouse, it could be a single family home. You could be doing new construction that you're buying in a neighborhood from a builder, or you could be building you know, from dirt yourself. There's a lot of different ways to go about the process of finding the right property for you. Once you identify that you're looking for a property uh, or that you're interested in making a purchase, the next best step is typically going to be to meet with a realtor because the realtor is going to have the knowledge of the entire process and what options and elements are available to you along the way, as well as most of the tools that are going to help get you there. So rather than guessing or just searching on your own, People spend thousands of hours on um, national, you know, MLS or just sites where they can search for homes themselves. And those are great tools. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're not that fantastic in terms of the ability to refine the search to things that truly are the key relevant um, elements for you. And they don't give you the insight that an agent's going to give you in terms of how to narrow things down so you're looking at what's most relevant. Um, as an example, if you look at a search engine, and <clears throat> so I'm in Atlanta as, as um, a reference point. Um, so if you look at, you know, Atlanta, three bedroom, two bath homes, you know, there are gonna be thousands of things that come up because Atlanta end to end is close to 60 miles. You're not gonna wanna be in every part of Atlanta, but you don't understand or you don't have the tools typically in those search engines to narrow the search in the way that's going to be most effective for you, but an agent can. Um, and an agent will also help you uncover what the key uh, what the key elements are and key factors are in helping you work through what's most important, what are the must-haves versus the nice-to-haves in that, in that process. Um, the next component is going to be typically uh, what kind of financing or what kind of financial financial vehicles are going to be um, a part of the purchase process. That could be um, an all cash transaction. It could be a loan, you know, with a down payment. It could be 100% financing. It could be, you know, a whole kind of sort of myriad things in the um, that come into play, um, as well as allowing potentially gift funds from come to, to come from other sources and things of that nature. But there are a lot of rules and kind of. Uh, potential gotchas along the way as you look at those different options. So it's really important to be working with somebody who understands what those are and who can inform you ahead of time and make sure you're set up for success. Also, it's important to note that um, in the market that we've been in for the last couple of years, you're doing the financing um, upfront much more so than you were before. So while you're still typically gonna have the loan uh, processing during the, the time of the purchase of the transaction. For the most part, what we're really doing in that time period is the appraisal piece. 
the underwriting of the individuals themselves we're typically doing before we ever um, get to an offer. And that's just to put you in a competitive advantage as you compete against other buyers because most buyers do have some kind of financing that's a part of the process. Um, and if you can do it up front the way that we're describing, then um, you can have a zero, effectively a zero-day finance contingency even though you're doing a loan because you've already been underwritten. So there are tricks of the trade kind of along the way, as well as literally hundreds of different loan programs that are out there. So don't assume that there's one loan or one size fits all. Most people are not doing a 20% down 30 year conventional fixed rate mortgage as we approach the market. There are lots of people putting less money down. There are some people putting more money down. There's plenty of cash buyers out there, but there's also plenty of people right now doing 0% down, even on non-VA programs. So don't assume that you know everything. I can tell you I've been doing this for about 20 years, and every six months, the rules change around financing in terms of what programs are out there, what's in favor, and what kind of options and opportunities exist. So it really will serve you to work with a realtor who understands the breadth of the programs that are out there and that has partnerships with lenders they can connect you with that are going to help you uncover the handful of programs that are most suited for your particular situation. Obviously, as you look at finding a real estate agent or a realtor or broker to work with, you want to look at not just can they get in the car and show me a home? You want to look at these factors that we've been talking about. Do they understand the neighborhoods? Can they help us understand and uncover what are the most important features to us? Do they understand what the financial products are and how to pair us with the right um, lender in the scenario? And that's going to really go kind of through the whole transaction. Do they have the right relationships to put us in touch with inspectors and contractors? And do they have a depth of knowledge that's going to allow them to really help us navigate the entire process with confidence, not just in what the current market is doing, but in all of the best practices that exist in the industry to make sure that you're protecting yourself in, in the best way possible. It's typically the most expensive financial transaction somebody has done up until this point in their life. And so it's important to get it right, not just in terms of what it is that you're going to live in and making sure that it's well suited for you and potentially for your family, but in understanding how it fits as a part of your financial portfolio and making sure that it's going to, um, at least as the best opportunity to meet your financial expectations and to serve you financially as you move forward. That could be in, in terms of resale value when you go to uh, move to the next property a few years down the, down the road. It could be in building the first property in your investment portfolio. Um, it could be in subdividing a property in order to um, offset some of the costs and uh, house hack to some extent the purchase of the property um, or understanding at least what options exist both in terms of just the logistics of um, the floor plan and the house itself, but also in terms of the municipality that you're in and, uh, and what options exist uh, in terms of expanding a property, in terms of modifying a property, in terms of you know, what can be subdivided for in terms of a legal address, in terms of utilities. All of those are complications and factors that come into play as we look at different options for rentability and we look at <clears throat> um, how a property can serve you both short and long term. Even if you're not thinking about it as a rental property in terms of where you are setting out on your expectations game, it's always good to have two to three exit strategies on any property that we look at along the way because you never know exactly what the financial market is going to be like in a couple of years or what your job situation might be or how your family might change. There are all kinds of different things that are external to our kind of expectation game that can be a part of the process or the, the reality that we have to deal with as we move forward. And so the better you position yourself up front and the more you think through what those things, our scenarios might look like, 
the better position you're going to be down the road um, to, to make this the smart financial play. Then we get to the part where everybody thinks it starts, which is just hopping in the car and finding a property. And um, obviously this is important, but it's important to understand that you're not just looking at the property in that process. You're looking at the neighborhood. You're looking at um, the you know parks around, the grocery stores around, the coffee shop, whatever it is that you do on a day-to-day -day basis in order to enjoy your surroundings, not just the property you're living in, but um, your entire lifestyle, how that um, you know works for you, houses of worship, whatever the case may be. You need to make sure that all of those elements are looked at and reviewed as a part of the process of finding the right home for you. And, um, and your agent is going to be able to really help guide you a lot in that process uh, because they've hopefully looked at you know, hundreds or thousands of homes in the area and will have the ability to give you a much, a much broader sense of the market. As we get through that process and identify one to maybe three or four houses that do meet your criteria, then it's a matter of understanding, you know, what kind of offer we want to put together. How's it going to serve you as a part of your financial um, process? Because now we're kind of tying back to that financing from the beginning. What loan products and loan vehicles were you looking at in order to help you best position yourself in the process and the, the property financially? And each property might have a slightly different scenario. You might find one property that's more expensive but that doesn't need any renovation. You might find another property that you love the potential of, but it might need work done to it. You can, in many cases, roll those finance or those improvement costs into the loan, but you have to know that you're doing that up, up front, but you know, kind of as we're making the offer and as the, as the loan's being underwritten, because all of that has to be a part of the process. So looking at each property that does potentially make the cut with that those eyes and really understanding what the total financial picture looks like now, so you can compare those apples to apples. And then we, you know, work on putting the offer together relative to how it's going to look to the seller. So it's important to understand as you go through the process, no matter how good or bad the market is, in order to come to terms on a property, you have to come to terms with the seller. Now, the agent's going to typically negotiate that for you, but... There are a number of things that can happen in the process that effectively cost you no money or cost you a nominal amount of money, like understanding what closing date is important to the seller. Do they, you know, are they trying to, you know, make a purchase on another home that's already under contract and where you can be flexible on the dates to some extent from your perspective, or understanding on on your side if you're getting out of a lease or whatever the case may be, making sure you're lining those dates up from a payment perspective. So you're ideally not double paying. Looking at um, things like, is the seller downsizing? And might be might it be helpful if they left a couple of things behind in terms of maybe outdoor furniture or something of that nature. There are some little things like that that you can uh, incorporate in your offer along the way that allow the seller to have less friction, that don't add expense to you, that can help you get a better deal or help you be the winning deal. Um, as a, as a part of that negotiation process. And so it's important as we enter the negotiation process for you to be working with a realtor or an agent who understands those nuances and who's willing to take the time to make the phone calls, to do the research, to understand what those elements are because often those little tiny um, adjustments to an offer can make you the winning offer and we are still in a market that does have often multiple bids that we're dealing with as a part of the process. Then... In most cases, we're dealing with some version of an inspection period. In our case, we're dealing with a due diligence period, which the buyer can cancel for any reason. Um, but those periods, again, because we're in a multiple bid scenario still for a lot of properties, those periods are very short. They're typically in the three to seven day range. Um, about five days is probably average right now. So that means you've got to be on top of it with getting an inspection done very quickly and having the opportunity to have some follow-up questions and some, you know, some experts to help you dial in what comes back during an inspection, as well as um, a day or two to negotiate with the seller any items that come up during that process. 
we are in a situation where in a lot of cases we can still get the seller to address some stuff, but again, with multiple bids, there's a limited ability to get the seller to address aggressively um, the issues that come up during inspections. So it's important as we go to make the offer and as you look at the property initially to be looking as thoroughly as you can so you have open eyes in terms of what it is that you're that you're going into. Obviously, you're not going to uncover everything in the process because you're not typically climbing around the attic or the crawl space, but you want to know as much as you can before you make the offer so that you're educated and you're, you're planning for, you know, what's coming in terms of maintenance for the property. And then as we move beyond the inspection and negotiating those terms, the loan typically is being underwritten and the appraisal is being done. And then we move towards the closing. Um, for the closing, obviously your uh, financing comes into play in terms of bringing all that all together. You're going to either be in an escrow state or in an attorney state. We're in an attorney state, so all closings in Georgia take place with an attorney. And the attorney in that case is typically not representing the buyer or the seller. They're representing the lender who's issuing the loan. Um, if there's no loan at all, then there's a very limited um, kind of positioning on the buy side, but um, but it's, it's basically an agnostic party to the transaction, just making sure that the title is clean, that the print paperwork is properly filed, and that any lien associated with the closing is firmly attached to um, to the property as the closing takes place. Um, and then obviously we move towards the, the move-in process and making sure that you're getting all the utilities transition, that you've got the movers lined up, that all of those elements take place as well as any repairs or maintenance that you want to do proactively as a part of that move-in process. Um, another thing I'll say is that it's also important to work with an agent or realtor who's willing to work with you through the ownership process as well as through the purchase process. I work with all of my clients um, really kind of indefinitely as long as they're in the property because you're going to have plumbing needs that come up two years down the road or a roofing need three years down the road or you know five years down the road there's going to need to be an electrician or something of that nature and most homeowners aren't going to need enough work to have those kinds of resources um, at their disposal on <clears throat> kind of on their Rolodex kind of scenario but <clears throat> we do that for our clients we actually will provide references and contacts handy men um, and appropriate professionals for needs as they go along the way there's a big variability in terms of cost and trust in in those different industries and elements and um, it's just a service that we provide in order to, to, to allow our buyers to have comfort that they've got a resource and a sounding board um, not just for um, who to call but also to kind of sort of talk through what it is they're planning to do a lot of things a lot of times we want to talk through with them they're planning on improving something a bathroom or a kitchen or something of that nature we want to know how long they're planning to be in the property and what decisions they're making and we want to help them understand how well that will position them in terms of getting that value back when they go to sell the property even if it's two five seven years down the road the decisions they make uh, can be significant in terms of uh, how, what kind of return they're going to get, you know, on some some thousand, you know, multi thousand dollar, tens of thousand dollar investments? We want to make sure that they're making smart decisions or at least informed decisions. So if they're making a decision that's not going to position well in the market, that's fine as long as they understand that and they they are willing to take that risk or that to to take on that cost themselves. We just want them to be well informed in the process. That's a really high level overview of kind of what's going to happen as you as you go through the home purchase process. Now we're going to dive in and look at things a little bit deeper.